Hello everyone. So I'm just doing a quick overview of the Xperia XA Ultra. This is a phone I've now had for about four weeks. I'm coming from the Z Ultra, so it's kind of a premium product and this is a more of a budget product. I got it for $300 at Best Buy. I must say it's, it, it is a lot of phone for $300. So it, it does have that for it. But um, I guess I'll just start out with the positives. Yes, it is $300. It has pretty good camera. Uh, of course, you can't compare it to the latest, you know, Galaxy S7 or anything like that, but it's good. And compared to the Xperia Z Ultra, it's, I mean, that camera on that phone was just absolutely horrendous. So it's miles ahead of that. And at least you can just take a decent picture and it'll come out good. Um, some of the things I just want to point out this phone is, I mean, it has a nice feel to it. It's generally looks nice. It's stylish. The kind of edge to edge screen, it makes the screen look even bigger. So it's, it's very stylish, especially from far away. You might notice my uh, kind of gross screen protector. It's because uh, the actual screen protector has not arrived yet. And this is a screen protector from an iPad that's been cut out to kind of fit this phone. But, um, so other things I just want to note is the phone definitely feels much, much, much cheaper than the Xperia Z Ultra. And sometimes I think maybe I should just go on eBay and get another Xperia Z Ultra because honestly, it's it's been the best phone I've ever used in my life. And um, this phone really doesn't live up to it. The, essentially, the Xperia Z Ultra had three negatives. It had no LED flash, it had a bad camera, and it had terrible speakerphone. And uh, this phone essentially is 100% excellent on all these fronts. It has dual LED flash, has a pretty good camera, not the best, but good. And uh, the speakerphone on this phone is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I mean, I could be driving in my Jeep at 89, I mean, 80 miles an hour, and this is a soft top, so you can barely talk to the person next to you and I can ha have no issue hearing GPS directions or even having a phone conversation using speakerphone with this phone. So it's, it's very good. Uh, I'm very impressed by that. Other thing is, uh, I mean, you definitely can tell this is a $300 phone. It, it feels nothing like the Xperia Z Ultra. It, when you press in the back, there's a bit of sag. I don't know if you can you see that, but it, it kind of, it feels like it has a little bit of space between the case. And I don't know if this is actually a specifically for design. Maybe it's has something to do with cooling the device and kind of giving it a little bit of room, but it, it definitely, it presses down a little bit. And everything, every part of it is like that as well. So when you press down on like the SIM card slot, everything, has a bit of give to it. Um, another thing is the power button. It's very, very easy to press. So it's kind of, you know, it's easy to put this phone in your pocket and accidentally turn it on. Also the placement of uh, the camera button and the audio are absolutely awful because when you hold the phone with one hand, so, and so unless you hold it with your right hand, which is not too bad, but you can still press the camera button with your, your hand here. Essentially you have to place both fingers in between as you can see between the two buttons and it's very easy to adjust the audio or just kind of screw with anything. So it's a very hard phone to kind of pick up and just grab and not press a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, I'm not a big fan of that at all, especially since the buttons are kind of easy to press. It's a, I think this is a kind of a big issue. This, the volume rocker should have been moved much higher or at least this camera button should have been moved to the top. Um, just, it's, it's very difficult to hold it without just constantly pressing things. Um, some other things to note, um, overall the battery life is not that great. I know there's been a lot of, actually since I bought this phone, I think there have been over five software updates and um, it's gotten better since the first update, but uh, it, it's still, it's basically, you know, I put this phone by my bed and I wake up eight hours later and the phone has lost 25 to 30% of its battery life often. And uh, with the Xperia Z Ultra, I would lose 2%, sometimes even one overnight. and. Uh, Essentially, as soon as you turn this phone on, it, it basically like the battery life on standby is pretty decent. I know it goes down a lot over overnight, and I think this may actually have to do with the fact that the reception by my bed isn't that great, and the reception on this phone does not seem as good as the Z Ultra, so it's possibly draining because of that. But the one thing I want to notice is that essentially once you start using this phone with the screen on and just if you're actually using it, the battery drains quite fast. Uh, you don't need to spend that long browsing Reddit or, you know, just looking at websites, images, pictures, and the phone's life will drain quickly. So um, it's a little too bad. Um, but in some way, it's really not too bad. I'm, I just wish the standby was really better. I just, I, I, you know, if I lay the phone down and I come back a few hours later, I don't want to see it losing 10% battery life due to nothing. This is a bit of a disappointment. 
Um, overall, in some ways, I am still thinking of going on eBay and essentially buying an Xperia Z Ultra. I just absolutely love that phone. It it was just absolutely fantastic, and I've never used a phone like it. I, I used to have a new phone every year or every six months, and I used Xperia Z Ultra for almost three years. And uh, pretty much the only reason I gave it up is because the back well, essentially was cracked. The glass was cracked so badly that at this point, I was kind of worried that the glass would literally shatter and you know kill me while being in my pocket. So I didn't like like shattered glass being essentially in my pocket. Uh, so I kind of just picked up this phone and. Overall, I've been impressed. I mean, it is a $300 phone, but um, I don't know. I mean, for the money, it's good, but there, there's some things here that, along with the buttons, it it definitely feels budgety. Now, one other thing I just want to point out, um, essentially, the scaling of the screen is, is not correct. And uh, there have been some suggestions on the forums on how to fix this, but some people say that this uh, makes the GPU and run higher and essentially you, you lose battery life due to this. But everything is very large. And I currently don't have a launcher on this phone, but everything is just super sized. It, it feels almost like it's a phone for blind people. It, it, everything could be much smaller and have much more cre screen real estate. So I just want to say that coming from a phone with a 6.44 inch screen, even though this is a six inch screen, it really feels more like a four and a half inch screen. It's just, the screen real estate is not being used the way it should be. Um, so just kind of a, this is just a quick overview, just my general thoughts of the last three or four weeks of use. And um, I'd say I recommend this phone considering it's 300 bucks, but it does have some minor issues. Also, uh, one other thing I want to note is, I think this is being hopefully patched and you can also read on the forums people are having this. It has sometimes weird touch issues where you'll be typing and it just kind of skips a letter or does something weird and you'll just kind of screw up everything you're typing and that's a little bit of a, a little annoying. And um, I did also experience one other very bad issue, which is why I don't have a launcher in my phone. It does not look customized. Is uh, after about two weeks of using this phone, I just restarted it and within 30 seconds of it starting, it said UI error and you click OK and the screen just basically went black. And that was it. The phone was completely useless. I had to use uh, Xperia software to basically wipe the phone. And after that, I haven't re even bothered resetting it because I, I purchased a new phone. I, I didn't have to wipe my Xperia Z Ultra a single time in almost three years. And the fact that I've had this phone for two to three weeks and I had to do a complete factory restore to just get it to even work. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't like that too much. Uh, and I hope, my, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of annoying, I must say. So these are my quick thoughts. I'll do a little bit more comparison between the Xperia Z Ultra and this device. But um, yeah, I mean, it is a $300 device. It's definitely forgivable, but it could be better.